have my seeds out here sitting on our kitchen table. The babies are gone. Miranda and them went on an excursion today with her mom. So I have them out and I'm going through the hardy annuals. This is the flower guys of 7B Southwest Virginia and today we're talking about hardy annuals. Here's a big question. Have you even thought about putting your hardy annuals out or even purchasing your hardy annuals? In this region, we're probably around two or three weeks late. We probably have around four weeks left uh, until we see or even have a warning of our first frost and it's not good. Our creek is literally right at my back door here. If we go right down here, we have a 30 foot creek and the frost line is very close. Let's just define what a hardy annual actually is. A hardy annual only survives one year through the cold temperatures. The time that you plant in your area will depend on your demographic location. In our case, we're using a south facing hill that has morning sunlight. When it comes up, we have six to seven hours in the mid season to the mature season of sunlight. Then we don't have evening sun, it's shady up here. I find that to be a huge advantage. One of the reasons for that is because when you have morning sun and you only have that six to seven hours coming through, then you're not worried about so much of the moisture levels because you don't have that direct sunlight all day. Well, the second advantage to that is, well, are you selling to a florist or a retailer that wants a long stem? And the tendency of that plant, it wants to stretch towards the light, which causes a longer stem, which in my case, it helps me sell more of. Let's head outside and I'll show you everything that I'm doing for the hardy annuals to go ahead and get them in the ground for this fall. 7,800 square foot is the surface area behind me on this hill. Well, we had a couple rows that we were doing and we're about to tear it all out, but we're going to keep these rows of dahlias and then we have our ageratum up there and our sedum. Everything else literally is coming out of here. We're gonna put our hardy annuals up here. You can see that there's no irrigation up here anywhere. We watered just a little bit up on top of the hill when it was the beginning of our spring season, just to make sure that the, the flowers were getting their germ proper germination. We are going to rip this snapdragon netting up. That was just the supports. We put double netting there so we could have the straightest stem as possible. They didn't do well because they didn't have enough water, I guess it seemed like, or um, maybe not enough nutrients. I don't know exactly. We're gonna try it again this year and we done three successions this year and only one of them made it. We just ripped up the snapdragon netting. And all of that was about $40 in our little post here. And we used the, the netting on everything on the hill. And we still have a bunch left over. And we're going to be able to use most of it uh, for the next season that we have already used this season. One thing you can see here behind me is how wide our grass strips are between each bed. That was a big problem because what we could have done is used more of the surface area. But I guess we were just learning at that point when we first started planting everything. But that's too wide. That was about 54 inches, maybe even 56 inches. And we were getting our mower down through there. And what, what it helped though on a steep incline like this is it helps soil erosion. And sometimes you might have to do that and sacrifice a little bit for the soil erosion. But what we're gonna do this, this upcoming season for our hardy annuals is we're gonna squeeze them in just a little bit uh, more together so that we're able to fit more on this hill. First season on this hill was 7,800 square foot and we were profiting around three to $400 a week. That was going to farmer's markets on the retail shops and that was some wholesale off of this hill. But the majority of it was farmer's markets and retail shops. My wife really helped out there a lot. She done all of the bouquet making for the farmer's markets and she also done a lot by delivering to the retail shops for me. If I organized it for her, she would just go out and send it out. And so that gave me the opportunity to point my direction elsewhere into the wholesale market. If you remember me speaking a little bit on how we do organics here, well, there's organic one and here's organic two. We have our goats out there on the hill and we'll just push them all over this hill back and forth for a few weeks. And they're actually on chains and they're just running around kind of loose and we move them around almost every day. Well, I need to get going on this because it's gonna get dark on me soon. So I'm gonna start mowing everything down. And that's one of our biggest tools that we use is the zero turn. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, we used to have a landscaping business and we left that and it was profitable. But some of the things that we wanted to learn was being sustainable, to be unique in our own way, to be able to have creativity and flexibility within our family. All right, got that done. That takes care of the coxcomb that looks like a rainbow colors running up through there, otherwise known as celosia. And then it takes care of the snapdragons that I had planted right there. 
I'm gonna keep the dahlias running up through there and I'm gonna keep the zinnias a little bit longer because they still are making money. I paid $4 for that pack of seed up there. And I believe that I've probably sold $25, if not more of those a week for probably three months now. It was $4 pack of seed. It's now the next day. And you might be wondering at this point, what is this video all about? For us, I'm trying to show the significance and the importance of trying to put your crops in over winter. Well, for one, it makes a, uh, a larger root system, and so you have a stronger plant in the beginning of the season. And for us, it's not just about a bigger bloom or a bigger root. It's most entirely about switching our gears towards something else, like planting dahlias in the springtime, or apple trees and plum and pear and cherry, all of these things that have a flowering branch that gives us enough time here when in the springtime, when we have our early crops here, we don't have to be out here planting while we can be over at the crab apple tree cutting stems ready to go down to Charlotte. So that's the difference. Where would you like to spend your time effectively? And for us, we would like to spend it right now because none of those things are blooming. So at this point, we can be putting our work here. We can benefit on our efforts in the springtime. We have Hamilton here with us. He's our puppy that we got a few months ago. At this point, you're probably wondering what we are growing here and we're not going to be planting it today. I was just prepping on our, getting our celosia out of the way, the snapdragons out of the way, uh, working on the dahlias a little bit, getting them back up to speed, just uh, planning and trying to figure out where our garlic's gonna go and where our larkspur is gonna go. We have rutabecca, a couple different styles. We'll have the Indian summer trail and then we'll have yarrow, um, which is the summer berries. It's like a Colorado blend that has many different colors in it. We're gonna plant that and hopefully be able to um, expect a return in the early spring from that. We have Dara, Calendula. We have Feverfew, which is great for putting as a filler, but it does have a strong smell to it. So some people won't really like that in their bouquets, but it looks great. It, it has a full bouquet looking style. I don't know if any of the viewers plant uh, dill, but dill is a great filler as well, and it's, it serves many purposes. Here we like to serve more than one purpose. We would like to eat the flower, or we like to be able to preserve it some way, or we like to sell the flower. So, the, you know, we want more than one purpose coming from these flowers because like I said in the beginning of the video, we want to be unique, we want to be sustainable, we want to be able to eat some of the flowers, like a calendula. I don't know if you've ever seen those before, but the bright little orange flower, they put it on salads and they also put it on the catering of a cake. Uh, Miranda, my wife, she puts it into bath soaps and also just soaks with it. You could put it in tea. There's many things that you can do with these. And I was just actually reading the other day because my uncle had sent it to me, people actually eat dahlias. And I've never seen anybody or heard of that before, but in uh, the reference to Mother Earth News Fair, it was in there as an article. And I was like, this is crazy, people eating it as salad. My question to you guys is, please let me know in the comments below. Are you interested in tuning in to like a 30 minute or a 45 minute live cutting uh, first thing one of these mornings in the next couple of weeks. It's starting to slow down a little bit and you can know and see exactly how I go through and cut these dahlias. I could just take the camera around with me on a tripod. Literally, I'm just gonna show you guys. Take it along like this, show you I'm cutting here, drop it and just literally start cutting. I don't know if you're interested in something like that. And I would love to show everyone more of a rough cut view of what it's actually like because the camera only tells so much. We could probably go over some disbudding and how I cut them, how I process them to go into the reefer to the wholesaler. Uh, let me know in the comments below as well what kind of content that you would like to see. Are you looking more to learn formally or informally? Or if there's certain things that people have questions about, I can specifically answer those in the videos as well. And that's my main point for you guys is just to teach you about the majority of dahlias because that's what we're mainly focused in. And hopefully I would like to be completely focused into dahlias. It is a process though. And it's one that I'd like to take you on. It's no straight to the point, cut it. It's, it's more so of a rough view of what's go actually going on. I forgot the tiller over at the farm, so I can't get this tilled up. I've got a lot of stuff that's going behind, like these right here, I've got to go through and disbud so that these new new buds can come through because you see them popping up. It's a process. It's one that takes experience, trials, hardships. 
it's not so much a correct way or a wrong way because I would love to learn from you guys as well. So if you have information or great experience that you could share with me or the others that are watching these videos, please do it and don't hesitate to do it. For now, that's it and we'll catch you on the next one and hopefully we'll have some better content for you, something that flows a little bit easier, but I really appreciate it. Catch you on the next one.